everyone. Welcome to the February 2017 update of the Power BI desktop. This release has features across the entire product area and we're very excited to share it with you today. The first area we're going to talk about today is improvements to the report view. The first feature we have today is word wrap on matrix row headers. So in January we released word wrap for table headers and we're following up on that in February with matrix row header word wrapping. So let me show you that in action. So I'm going to start by adding a matrix to the canvas. And to the matrix, I'm going to add brand name. And I'm going to add class. And for each of these, I want to see the sales amount. Now in this matrix, some of the brand names are quite long and the table has to be wider than necessary to show the full name. But with this release, since we've added row headers word wrapping, I can go to the row headers card in the formatting pane and I can turn on the word wrap toggle. Now with this toggle on, whenever I resize this column to be smaller, the row headers will word wrap to fill the space that's provided to them by the leaf nodes of the matrix. So as long as there's room and empty space within the row header section, we will continue to word wrap and then after that we'll start truncating. The next feature we have is the ability to change the X and Y axis font size. This feature has been very asked for within our user voice forum and we're glad to finally be able to provide this to you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build out a column chart. And in this column chart, I'm going to add subcategories and I'm going to see this for sales amount. Now the default font size that is on this chart may be too small in some instances. For example, if you're going to be projecting this in a really large meeting room or in a conference and you want users to be able to read the labels from the back of the room, you can now go into the formatting pane and under each of the axis pivots, you can increase the text size. So the default size is 11, but you can go ahead and make it a little bit wider. By default, whenever you have a title on your axis, the size you set for the, the axis labels also applies to the title as well. But you can go in and customize that. So if you need your title to be a little bit smaller or larger than your axis labels themselves, you can go ahead, you can go ahead and change that as well. And you'll be able to do this font size adjustment for any axis on any chart type. We have another feature this release for Cartesian charts as well. You can now also specify the minimum category width that you need for your chart. This is particularly useful whenever you're showing data labels on your charts. Whenever there's not enough room for the whole data label to show, we tend to hide that data label. However, if you want to be able to force the data label to show, you can go in and increase the category width until the category is wide enough to show that data label. So let me show you that. On the same chart, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn data labels on. Now you notice there's a few of these that the data label aren't showing for and in some cases the data labels are a little cramped and I would want to give them a little bit more room. By making the minimum category width wider I can guarantee that the labels will show and give all of them a little bit more space. 
So I'm just going to increase the size to around 71. And now every single data label shows and they have lots of room. Now this feature is a minimum width. What that means is we will never make the bars smaller than whatever you set, but we will make them wider to, if it makes the chart look better. So if you go in and you filter out certain categories and with our auto detection logic we realize that you could make an, the chart look better with wider bars, we will go ahead and do this. This feature just means that we will never make it smaller. So if you have any data labels that need showing, this is a way to guarantee that they will show. The last feature I'm going to talk about for, for the report view is a addition to the line chart. We have a new card in the line chart that lets you control both the thickness of the line and the join type of the line. So let me show you what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a line chart. And I'm going to add order date to the axis. And I'm going to add sales amount to the values. And I'm going to add class to the legend. Now our default lines can be small in some situations. Going back to that situation where you're presenting at a conference in a big room, sometimes people won't be able to see the line that well with the skinny bar, the skinny line that we have. With the new option I mentioned in the formatting pane called shapes, you'll be able to go and increase the stroke width. So you can make it a little bit wider and you can also, depending on what kind of style you're going for, you can also join, change the join type. So this is whenever one piece of the line is meeting another at that data point. You can choose if you want that to be a rounded corner. You can also choose the miter join type or the bevel join type. So whichever one kind of matches the style you're going for, you'll be able to set that. With this release, we are very happy to introduce two new quick counts for you guys to try out. The first being percent of row total, and the second being percent of column total. And you'll be able to try out these two new quick calcs whenever you're using the matrix visual. So let me show you that. So I have my matrix selected, and in the field wheel I have my sales amount. I can go in here and I can click the quick calc option, and in this dialog under show value as, by default, of course, it's no calculation, but I can go in there and I can pick one of the three, the three quick calcs that we have. Of course, the percent of grand total, which we've had for quite a while, and now percent of column total and percent of row totals as well. So I'm going to go and I'm going to pick percent of column total because that's what works for this matrix, and I'm going to hit OK. The quick calc is automatically calculated and applied to my matrix. And now I can see that for this column, I can see what percentage of sales that row applied to. So for a datum deluxe, that accounts for about a half a percent of my total sales. We are very excited about these two new quick calcs. And so I hope you guys will try them out and be sure to let us know after trying them out which quick couch you would like to see next. The next section is data connectivity and we have three updates for this release. The first is that for ODBC and OLEDB connectors we now support select related tables. You've likely already seen this option for the other relational data sources we have but whenever you are connecting using one of these two connectors, you'll now be able to click this button to select all the related tables to the one you already have selected. So this greatly speeds up the time of having to search for and connect to all the tables you want. 
The next feature is an enhancement to our folders connector. So in a previous update of the Power BI desktop, we did a lot of work to really improve the combined experience for files using the folder connector. And now you'll be able to access that new functionality right from the preview dialog. So let me show you where you can find it. So if I go to the home ribbon and I get data and I pull it from the folder data source, I'll be able to select a folder path. So for this example, I'm just going to go with my downloads folder, hit OK and OK. And then right from here, and instead of just the typical load and edit that we have, you can now see that we have combine right here. And you can choose to combine and edit or combine and load. So it's just a really quick way to be able to go ahead and combine all of the files that you have in this folder. The last data connectivity change we have is we've unified the text and CSV connectors. So previously under get data, under file, text and CSV would have been separate, but now we have one source for, for both of those. So whenever you connect to it, you'll be able to by default pick between text, CSV, and PRM files. But of course, you can always go in here and pick all files if you want to search for a different extension. Our next section is query editing improvements. Our first improvement here is a new location for the option change type using locale. So whenever you're in the query editor, you can always you could always previously change your type using this column header type dropdown. But with this release, we've added the using locale option here as well. So it's a new quick access way to this option that lets you be able to both specify the type that you want it to be changed into and also the locale you want us to use when you want us to take into account when doing the conversion. So this just is just another quick way to be able to access this very helpful functionality. The second improvement here is a new option added to our context contextual menu in the steps pane. It's called insert step after. So when you're in the query editor, you'll be able to, whenever right clicking on a step, You'll be able to go in here and choose this new option that lets you add a new step within the existing queries. Whenever you select insert step after on whatever step it is, you'll be able to, it will actually insert a new custom step after that step. And so this just gives you another quick shortcut whenever you want to add a custom step. The last improvement we have in this release is a way to quickly access some resources we have available to you. There's two places that we have really easy ways for you to get started with Power BI or find people to help you get started with Power BI. And before to reach those, you would have to go to powerbi.com and search for them out there. But now, whenever you're in the product, right from the Home tab, you'll be able to quickly access those. So the first new resource is the Solution Templates. So when you go here, you'll be able to find a couple of different quick Solution Templates that give you a nice wizard experience. And when you finish that wizard experience, you'll have everything provisioned for you to have this type of solution. And we have a couple of different solutions here, such as campaign and brand management for Twitter, and you'll find others as well. So you make sure to check this out and see if you could use any of these templates. The other option here is to a quick link to our partner showcase. So going here will allow you to be able to peruse all the partners that we have you can search by country, industry, departments, or just search directly using a partner name. 
So this just gives you another option to consider whenever you're setting up the Power BI solution in your company. So that's it for this release. Make sure to try out all these features, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and we'll be sure to get back to you.